hey there guys and welcome back. Well it's been over three years since I purchased my saw stop three horsepower professional cabinet saw and what do I think of it now after three years? We're gonna find out on today's show. Well this saw has taken some serious abuse over the past three or more years now and what do I like about it? What don't I like about it? When I first brought you the assembly video way back when, I promised a review of the tool. And honestly, with this size of a tool, it's a, like it's a table saw. It doesn't really do anything super special, but it takes some time to get in there, really work with it, and make those decisions as to what you like and what you don't. So let's head over to the saw and start going through the features of this particular unit. Well, the very first thing that I want to touch on here is the finish of the cast iron. And I'm actually quite pleased with it. This particular unit here has received nothing more than a clear coating or a polish with AutoSol, which I've spoken about on other programs. And it really has gone a long way to protecting the top. I mean, there is scratches in it, but show me a table saw that doesn't have scratches in it. I'll show you one that's not used is what I'll show you. This table, as far as the finish goes on the cast iron, it has been phenomenal since day one. The miter slots are true. I have never had an issue with them being out of whack with the trunnions. Mm -hmm. I have never had any issues with sloppy fits on either side. Sometimes on the cheaper saws, you'll have the left rail be slightly off from the right. So even though your miter fence fits perfectly here, it may be sloppy on this side or vice versa. It could be sloppy here, but too tight over here. No issues here with fit or finish of the table on the saw stop. Well, the saw stop gets a lot of flack online for this. And what this is, is the extension table. And I guess it gets flack because of the material that it's made out of. A lot of people don't like the fact that it's made of board. I believe it's particle board with some sort of melamine coating over the top. People seem to really hate on this thing. But honestly, it's been well over three years that I've used it. And again, even though it has a few scratches in it from scraping wood across it or whatever, the thing is still rock solid. It is held out and persevered over everything I've put it through over the past three or more years. So I don't know. There's such a thing as cast iron wings and that sort of thing, but that just adds to the expense and the weight of the saw. And this is already one heck of a beefy saw. So would I change it? I don't know. I haven't had a problem with it, guys. So honestly, quit hating on this thing. It does a great job and look at how good it looks after three years. Well, it's a little unfair for me to review this. And what this is, is the stock miter gauge that comes with the saw stop. And really there's nothing wrong with it. It has uh, positive stops at zero and at 45, and they are fully adjustable. And you know, you can dial them in to please, you know, your own liking. And it tightens down just fine. There is no play in it on either side of the miter slot. So fit and finish is just fine. But honestly, the reason I say it's unfair for me to review this particular part of the saw is because I hate them. I hate all stock miter gauges and I have yet to see a saw that comes out with a miter gauge stock that is worth its weight in gold. And for the price that you pay for a saw stop, which is in the thousands of dollars, you would think that you would get a much higher quality miter gauge because let's face it, when you're making frames or anything like that, your miter fence is the backbone to that project. And to have something as sloppy as what this thing is, where you know you dial that in, put it to the stop and then tighten it down. In my mind, there's just way too much room for error there. There is no micro adjustment. 
uh, I've never seen one that I like. So this is nothing against saw stop. It's against stock miter fences in general. Do I like this? I hate it. But do I use it? No, I don't. I have an aftermarket one that I use. But like I also said, you think for the money you pay for the saw, this would be of better quality. Well, I think the next thing that I really want to touch on here would be the dust collection of the saw stop. And honestly, it's quite superb and I I love it. It's uh, it's amazing how much dust it collects and how much does not go into the cabinet. So I'll just remove the riving knife here and I'm going to put in the blade guard. And this thing here, although it looks extremely cumbersome, it is actually incredible and does a fantastic job of dust collection with this overarm dust collector that attaches to the back end of it. Again, if you think it's cumbersome, all you need to do is cut a few sheet good products with this attachment in place and you will be amazed at how much dust there is not. It, it rides on top of the stock perfectly as it lifts up the wings here at the bottom extend down below the actual blade guard to keep constant seal along your sheet goods which allows this overarm dust collection here at the back to suck all the dust out of this chamber as well from the four inch port at the back it sucks it out of the cabinet from a shroud that's down inside that surrounds the blade it's very well designed. It works very well. For me, in most cases, I'm not necess necessarily cutting larger pieces, so this gets in my way and I need to remove it. So you don't see me use this too often on the show, but when I do use it, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And although it did take a little bit of getting used to, once I was used to it, I had no complaints whatsoever. So dust collection on this thing, a1. Absolutely love it. Well, while we're on the subject of the blade guard and safety equipment, I want to show you how easy it is to swap it out between the blade guard and the riving knife. I have a theory, and the theory is that when it comes to safety equipment, if it's not a easily accessible and b easy to use people aren't going to use it there's a reason i keep my face shield directly above my saw that's so i can just reach up grab it and snap it on my face and this safety equipment being the riving knife is absolutely no different than that the ease of use makes it easy to use i guess and because of that you're more likely to use it for years, I worked on a saw that had no riving knife, and it's just a dangerous situation. So we'll just go through this. It's a matter of just lifting this one lever, which releases this whole mechanism. You pull that out of your way. You take your riving knife. It drops into the exact same slot, and you push this lever down, and you're done. Riving knife in place in seconds. And I'm working around a camera, not bumping it you'd be a lot faster if you weren't trying to film and avoid the camera. So what I'm saying is safety features and their ease of use here is absolutely spectacular. And I love the fact that they've put that thought into it to make it easier to use and make it more accessible for the user. Well, the next thing I'd like to touch on, and it's kind of a complaint, but it's of a personal nature, and that is for the dado blade setup of the saw stop. And I absolutely dread whenever I have to do something with the dado because it's such a, uh, I don't want to call it cumbersome because it's not, but it's something that I think could be avoided. And what we have is it does not come with a separate faceplate to use with your dado because of course, you can't put your own custom ones into this hole. You have to use the ones that they provide because of the setup of the whole thing. So the one comes with it and that's your base model. This is for the dado. You can see that it does not have the slot cut here to slide in past the riving knife because of course you don't use a riving knife with that. But what there is, however, is you require a separate break. 
and the separate break for the saw stop or for the dado blade has a much thicker pad here and it's a much larger mechanism because of course dado blades are much smaller. It's, it's not a bad thing. It's great that they've made accommodations for a dado to be used with this. I know that in some countries dados are not uh, accessible or usable, but here in Canada, we do use them. So it's great that they've provided a break that we could get for the dado blade, but it would have been nice if there would have been some consideration, considerations made where the existing break could be used, where you didn't have to swap out the break all the time. So it's just my own little personal beef. Other than that, it's a great system and that works very well. Now, what about changing that mechanism? How easy is it to change out the brake? Why don't we try it and see? Well, I've had a few table saws where the wrenches that they provide for blade removal are absolute garbage. But I can honestly say that with the saw stop, that is not the case. I guess what they lacked in spending on their miter gauge, they pumped into their wrenches, which are extremely large and extremely beefy. And the offset of them that you can see here is actually really convenient and works extremely well for removing the blade. So we'll just get this blade out of the way and I'll remove the riving knife so that you can see the blade set up while we take it out and swap it out. And again, the ease of removal of this riving knife is unbelievable. Now to remove the brake, there's a little red tab here and that just turns up 90 degrees and you just pop it out just like that, and then the brake removes. I'm having a little bit of issue here because the camera's in my way, but hopefully you can get the idea. And now the dado blade, or the dado brake, sits in its place, pops in place just like that, and then you take that pin, put it in, it only goes in one way, and you lock it in place. That's it, that's how fast one-handed that you can change that brake. And I know I complain about it and I dread having to do it, but it's all a necessary evil and that's just the way it is. But as I said, it's a good system, it's quick, it's easy to change. And if the safety equipment is easy to use and easy to change, you're more apt to use it. Well, I guess the next thing that I wanna to touch on are the adjustment controls and on other saws that I've had, I found these to be rather cheap, but saw stop spared no expense for the blade lift. And the only plastic part on it is the center locking knob. Um, I probably would have liked to see this to be something metal, the equivalent of what they've used for these adjustment handles. But after three plus years of use, these things are still rock solid. There is no play, there is no wear in them. The finish is still absolutely perfect. And again, they get a lot of use and abuse. Um, these are basically the parts that would wear out the fastest because of their constant wear and tear, but there's not a bit of wear on them. I mean, they are still rock solid and I think they've done a great job with it. Although my personal preference is I'd like to see a beefier uh, lockdown. Other than that, it's all good. So what about our stops at 45 and zero? Well, you know what? It's been over three years. I'm getting tired of saying that, so I'll stop saying it. Um, but the stops are still bang on at zero and 45. For me, it doesn't really matter because I check with every every time I use it anyway to make sure that the blade is square, especially if I've been adjusting or goofing around with it. But for the most part, these adjustments have been right on. This angle gauge that they give you here is not perfect. And it never will be because you've got the deflection of your line of sight, which will of course, unless you're dead square to that and can see exactly how the angle is, you're not gonna get it perfect you're better off to use an angle guide and check the blade, but that's the same across the board with any saw. As far as the finish of the cabinet, again, 
it hasn't taken much abuse because I'm not kicking it around and that sort of thing. But other than being a little dusty from out here in the shop, it's 100%. If I give it a wipe down, it looks like it was the day it was bought. So no complaints there whatsoever. The control as far as the on off switch, I love the large paddle. This has been absolutely spectacular for hitting it with your knee to shut it off when you're done a cut. Um, I've kind of gotten into the habit of that and it's, it's just been a total asset to be able to kick that off. It's also an asset to know that you've got this safety feature here built in where if it contacts skin, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna get into that part of, uh, of the saw because how do you review something that you have never done? I've never tripped the mechanism. I hope I never do. It is not a good thing to have your fingers into the blade like that. It's just a nice peace of mind knowing that that feature is there. And you can test the feature just to make sure that it is seeing the conductiveness of your fingers. And I'll just show you how that works. Well, as I said, I'm not going to get into the brake feature of this too much. Um, it's hard to review something that you haven't actually used. But we'll just turn the saw on. You can see that it goes through its internal check here. That's why the red flashing light it wants to make sure that everything is functioning correctly. And it will not give you the green unless the system is good to go. So here we have the green. You can see it works. And I'm just going to tap the blade with my hand. There you go, you see that? The second I touched it, that thing went into a fault. So if this saw was spinning, whether it be on startup, wind down, or when it was running, that blade would have already kicked in and dropped that blade below the table. So it's just a little test if you need to do that. I think it's a great little thing. And uh, you know what, it's peace of mind. Well, with most saws and their accessories, there's never a place to put them. And I like how SawStop has given a lot of thought to onboard storage here. And it's just a little bracket that's down at the base of the cabinet and it holds everything that you need. So when your riving knife is not installed, it can sit right here. And when your blade guard is not installed, it sits in this slot with your miter gauge right beside it. A1 for that, I think it's a great setup. Easily accessible, easy to grab, and never a problem to put it back quickly. Again, like I said, same as with safety equipment, if the storage or onboard storage is hard to access, you just aren't going to use it, and you'll just end up throwing these things around your shop. So the fact that they've given you a place to put it here makes it so that in my opinion, I think you'll use it a lot more or at least be apt to use it. Well, although this really has nothing to do with the saw, it is an accessory that comes with the saw and uh, I have never used it. And the reason I've never used it is because I think this thing is way too long. This to me is cumbersome as all heck and I have my own push sticks and pads that I use that I prefer and I just find this to be a little awkward. Now they do provide a pretty little storage space for that on the left side of the saw, which is just a built-in hook. And it's a good thing because uh, it's been its permanent home since it was purchased. And as I said, I've never used it. But if you like this sort of thing, I guess it's nice that they provide you with one, but honest guys, how far do you have to get away from the blade? Holy crow. Well, what would a review of this saw be without talking about the fence? And this is the upgraded fence that you can get for them. And yeah, I paid extra for it and I'm glad that I did. And this fence is dead solid. I mean, it slides beautifully across the rails. There is absolutely no problems whatsoever. I love the fact that the windows that it has for the measurements have the magnifiers in it to enlarge the numbers. My old eyesight is horrible. So I love the fact that I can line it up and snap it down right there. That's at four inches. And I can pretty much say with confidence that is going to be four inches. 
I've never had to adjust this. I've never had to change these slides. I've never had it so that I had to, oh geez, that's out. But yet I'm one of these guys that even though I set it at four inches here, I still have that paranoia factor. And maybe that's just old school, I don't know. But I still have to check it. Honestly, I don't need to because this fence and where the steel tapes are that are on the rail, everything about it, as long as you follow the setup procedures that they give you in the manual when you first calibrate this saw, it's spectacular. I've never had a problem with this fence. I love how solid it is. It, it weighs more than my firstborn child did when she was born. Like It is a solid unit. So complaints about the fence, not a single one, not a complaint in the world about that. So we've talked about the fit and the finish of the tabletop and the extension table. We've talked about the fence, the safety features, the dust collection, the ease of operation, the ease of adjustment, the fit and finish of all of the handles for your adjustments. And well, we've talked about pretty much everything there is, but what about the power? Does this saw have the power for what you need? And I'm gonna tell you with a 240 volt, three horsepower motor in this thing, it is more than sufficient for anything you need in your shop. I have never been able to stall it. I've cut some, some thick stuff and some that it was even binding a little bit with some two inch thick oak that decided it wanted to twist. Oak loves to do that, doesn't it? But the saw stop didn't care. It tore through it like it owned it. It was crazy. So the three horsepower motor I don't think you'll ever need more than that for your home shop application. Industrial may be different. We're not talking industrial here. We're talking about for us at home in our shops. I am 100% satisfied with the three horsepower. And well, the fact that it's 240 volts is good for me as well because without getting too technical, the amperage is inversely proportionate to the voltage, etc., etc., which means that uh, essentially, by doubling the voltage at 240, you cut the amperage in half. So the saw is actually using less amperage. I, I know, technical crap. Don't worry about it. The three horsepower will serve you just fine. Well, you see a lot of tool reviews out there for a lot of different tools. And you get these guys that are telling you that everything is roses. Everything is great. I call BS personally because there isn't a tool on the market that has everything perfect. There hasn't been a way to please everybody. There never will be. It's kind of like producing a YouTube channel. Not every show pleases everybody. And the saw stop is absolutely no different. And one of the problems I have with it is this. And what this is is the access panel at the back of the saw for making adjustments. Well, let me tell you, I'm six foot two, and I won't tell you how much I weigh, but when I'm trying to get into this little compartment, because it's only about this big, it's less than the size of my head, and I've got to get in there if I want to make an adjustment, and I'm talking about your original setup now, when you're making sure that your stops are perfect and that sort of thing, all of that original adjustment, I would have loved to see a much bigger panel to open up and get in there and actually be able to work. What a cumbersome thing to have to do to work in a panel that's no bigger than your head. Now, if you got a fat head and then you get a bigger panel, right? No, it doesn't work that way. The panel's too small to access it. The side panel, however, where the motor is to change the belt, if the dust collection should clog to clean it out and that sort of thing, wide open. It's a great little setup and it makes it easy to get in there and do what you have to do. It's all part of saw maintenance. So that side panel has great access. The one thing I don't really like about this saw is the way they run their cables or their controls. The cords just stop from the control panel and they drape around. Now I have put um, adhesive tie wrap mounts all the way around or or uh, cable tie mounts whatever you want to call them around the saw to be able to tie wrap 
all of those cables up nice, high, and tight. But over time, with the sawdust, they have let go. I'll probably drill the cabinet and screw some in to get some permanent mountings and keep them out of my way. But there's another down point to this saw that they could have done a little better with the cable dressing from the control unit and the power cord. Also, I found the power cord to be a little short for my liking. Um, so for that reason, I actually removed it. I went out and purchased some SOW cab tire cable um, to install and put a new 240 volt plug on it and rewire it with a much longer cord. Of course, paying attention to voltage drop and all of that stuff. Uh, technical, maybe, but for those that don't know, I'm a licensed electrician, so <laughs> that kind of stuff comes second nature to me. So it was really no big deal. For you, however, if you wanted the longer cord, they do give explicit instructions in the manual as to what size cable you need to allow for the voltage drop and um, how to go about changing it out. So they've done a good job with that. But for my liking, the cord was too short story of my life. <laughs> All right, so enough of the talking. Let's sum it up. Out of 10, how would I rate the saw stop professional contractor saw, the three horsepower model? I'd give it an eight. Eight out of 10. Um, Small things that irritate me about the saw with the small access panels, the short cords, the less than, or let's, let's, let's call it less than my standards of miter fence um, is enough to make it so that it lost the two points. But the eight points that it did get are dead solid eight points. I mean, I love this saw. I honestly cannot see me ever replacing it and I dread the day that the motor should go or something like that because I absolutely love this saw. It may sound that I've got a lot of negative things to say, but that's not true. They're just small little nitpicky things and it's just my opinion. It's one guy's opinion against the world here. So would I recommend this saw to you for your shop at home? A hundred percent. I honestly would. I know there's a lot of controversy around the brake mechanism and saw stop trying to get it into the mainstream of table saw manufacturing. I don't care about any of that crap. All I care about is what the saw does for me and the confidence that it gives me knowing that I have that safety feature. Is the saw expensive? You darn straight it is. It is big bucks. But do I regret spending that big money? I'm going to say no. The reason I don't regret it is because I love the saw. Forget about the safety feature. Forget about that break. Forget about all of that electronic fancy jazz. I love the saw for its solid capabilities and the fact that it is built like a brick outhouse. The thing is unbelievably solid. It is right up there with the top dollar saws on the market. And I would put it pretty much at the top, in my opinion. I've looked at a lot of them, and this is the one that I chose. So, honestly, in some cases, you do get what you pay for. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Saw Stop. It's, it's not a debate about the safety mechanism, so please don't start a war down below in the comments here about they did this and they did that. It's not about that. We're talking about the saw and its functionality here. So I hope you've enjoyed the review. I hope if you had any questions about the saw that this review has answered them for you. But if not, as always, feel free to add your comments or your questions below and I would be more than happy to help you out if I can. So guys, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. It's been a lot of fun bringing this show to you and yapping about my saw. So I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.